We're on. Okay, I will the meeting. Our special uh, fire department startup committee meeting at 6.35. And um, we'll have the close of the Councilmember Warren. Here. Chairperson Haggerty. Okay. Um, introductions. Would you two please introduce yourselves? Well, I'll leave the antenna speaker. Well, I'll leave that. Sorry. Don't leave that. We know each other. Well, <laughs> just for the record. Yeah. Tim Brown, Mayor. Oh, I'm. Tuesday, we'll, 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 we'll have you vote on it before we talk to uh, uh, Congressman Calvert. Okay, what was John's specific objection? That he felt it needed to be uh, a vote of the council to authorize me to do that. Well, yeah. yes. so. But, that, but, but it, because the issue was raised, right. um, it's better just to have it formalized. I know right. it's a waste of time, it's a waste of money, it's a waste of resources. It's also vows to bully tactics, which I know. encourages more. But my guess is um, when I when I get a hold of the, of the county, my guess is I won't be able to speak with them until early May. Right. And so that's not a problem. The, the idea is that we're giving them the, they're going to get the six months notice, so we meet the window. Right. That's okay. that's just the whole thing that we have to get done. So we'll pull the trigger on that. And you know, I'll, I'll you know, send them an email. I'll send them out a formal letter Tuesday afternoon after we're done okay. to Chief Hawkins. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay. We're good. All right. And um, 
with just regards to that, I, the one option I brought up at the last meeting was possibly staffing it with AMR. And so right now I'm playing phone tag with them. So now we've been playing phone tag. So, but but they know I want to talk to them. So hopefully I'll get a hold of them next week and find out um, what their story is. is. Pretty much, yeah. A couple of emails, phone tag. It just happens. So I'm not too concerned. They know that I want to talk. So I'll probably hopefully be able to get a hold of them by next week. So this, this is not going to this is not going to drag. I won't let it drag out. Don't worry. The, the, there's time sensitive. It is. Uh, okay, uh, so you're still working on the AMR. What about um, speed of the line? Um, would you please publicly describe? Uh, I had people have heard that one of our options is that possibly contracted with state. Correct. That's Could one option. Yes, explain, explain that. Sure. Sure. State. Because I've had people that question that the sure. state had a fire department. Correct. I would like that. So just quickly, because my experience is um, Riverside County is unique because of the way their county, and the way county provides fire service, they contract it out. It's been my experience that most uh, you know, the counties that have their own fire department. So let's take, for example, the city of Kaipa and San Bernardino County. San Bernardino County has their own fire department. The city of Kaipa can <coughs> fund their own department, do it citywide. They could contract with the county, or they could contract with the state, with Cal Fire. They've chosen to contract with Cal Fire. Not a problem there. So I think one of the options is um, looking at the fact that, okay, uh, after reviewing the contract several times between the state and Riverside County regarding fire service, that it's not, they don't have an exclusive operating right. So, if there's some sort of issue, I feel that we, uh, we, have, we have some legal ground if, say, if, if Cal Fire we feel is giving us good service, and it's one of our options to look at, is to go directly to the state of contract for them. That, is, that would be an option. So let me just clarify this in my mind. Um, our firemen have Cal Fire on their shoulders. Mm -hmm. So the county subcontracts to Cal Fire? Correct. So instead of, you have San Bernardino County, who provides their own fire, so they have their own fire department. Riverside County's fire department, the, the Board of Supervisors, instead of having their own, has chosen to contract with the state to provide fire protection within this within the county of Riverside. Okay. And then therefore, if you're a city that wishes to contract with the county for fire services, you will get Cal Fire. Okay. Correct. Yeah, exactly. And um, I just have a little bit more information on that with regards to costing. I, I, briefly spoke to somebody who talked to a unit chief up in um, Central California and the way the modeling how they cost it out and I don't know it's, it's kind of big to me right now so they look at um, when Cal Fire does it sometimes they do it at what they call 2.7 person that's the 2.7 is their multiplier um, it sounds like to me that Riverside County is using a 3.0 multiplier, so that could be where we're looking at a four or five hundred thousand dollar difference. And so I'm going to get those numbers straight before, so I know what I'm talking about. But I've heard about this multiple, this this 2.7 or 3.0 multiplier. That could be what they're doing. So that, once I get that straight, there'll be hopefully something when I have that discussion with the county and ask them about how they do that. Okay. And uh, do you have any? Uh idea of how soon you'll be able to talk with have you contacted state yet no not yet i want i need to go oh, one step at a time i need to go to i need to go to the county because we have our one year you know our one year deal we, we're kind of under the gun and so when we approve that at the next meeting we'll do that and get that going and then um, depending on which way the council wants to go and, you know hopefully i'll have conversations with amr and see if that's a viable option if not then we'll be, you know, then we'll look at these other options. Do you think you're going to have that conversation with AMR before our before? Six meeting, yes. Because <clears throat> our public safety meeting is the day before. Right, the fifth. I'm hoping to have it before then, so I can Good. give you guys some, I, or I can, you know, we can have that discussion so we can say, yes, AMR is going to do it. No, it's not financially feasible for them, or, or yep, they want something. Start pulling this stuff together as soon as we can, because. 
it, our options are the state, right? Um, like staying with county, right? Forming our own fire department, right. or going out to bid with Hammond and Murrieta right. and or Corona, and, and uh, so there are options. Well, if, if you went out to bid, I would assume state would be one of. Yeah, we'd send you know if, if we think it's going to be a thing. I mean, we could send it to everybody. We could send it to we could send it directly to the county and the state, Marietta. Um, Hammond, I don't know if we want to go that far, but we could just to see if they were willing to do it. I know. Well, Hammond's as close as Corona. It's about right. The same right. We know just, you know, Marietta's close. They'd be yeah. able to do things. And but you haven't talked with the Marietta Fire Chief. Yet. No, no, not yet. Because uh, there have been conversations with him where he. Uh, didn't express much of an interest, so I'd be interested in. Who didn't express what an interest on? Fire Chief of Marietta. <clears throat> it was my understanding. I think Ariel. Met oh, him. about interest about uh, giving us a bit. Yeah. And well, not some... giving us a bit, right. but just taking over her uh, responsibility. I don't think she discussed a bit. I think it was just, would you have an interest in? Right. And that's something maybe long term we can look at. That's, a, that's another idea I have, but I have a short term problem that I need to fix first. So I've got okay. a two-pronged two approach here. Okay, so, so our options are, as I said, uh, going out to bid, mm -hmm. whether it be... And we can determine who we want, to, we want to go to bid with, yes. And um, and starting our fire department, basically. Correct. Mm -hmm. And we would need to do that fairly quickly, because we're going to start our home. We're going to need the full 18 months. Right. So, okay. what we had talked about before was maybe postponing our meetings so that they weren't weren't scheduled regularly. We have another one coming up in three weeks. Um, instead, having them on an as-needed basis, right. like the yeah, I, I think now, basically, um, I think the committee's job is to run its course, yeah. and so now it's really in the council's hands, and it's at that decision-making level. Um, so your options are either we can, you can we go to the council and disband the committee, or we kind of put it I call creative hiatus and, and do it kind of like the planning commission where we just do it as needed so if something comes up we can have a meeting get you guys informed and so when we then we bring that to the next council meeting then you guys can talk about it from there i would like to do that okay okay yes we won't just stand we'll just we'll just, we'll just, we'll just do it as needed if something if part of covers some way to handle any issues that came up more quickly right than having you have here tonight I'm disappointed that you're not considering dissolving as an as an option um, I understand that you're talking about going directly to the state which is Cal Fire cutting out the middleman for Riverside County which contracts with Cal Fire um, dissolution would also be with Cal Fire and so I'm just curious why you're not even considering that as an option it, I'm not that <laughs> okay why you're not considering that as an option when we could, with dissolution, become an unincorporated part of the county, get back to Cal Fire service, and have Riverside County sheriffs under the unincorporated part. I pulled up a, uh, an article from August of 2015, which talked about the ratio of sheriffs to, um, person, to the population, and the county supervisors had voted and, and I maybe, I mean, I didn't memorize it, but it was something like 1.2 sheriffs to 1,000 residents 
uh, their current status in 2013 was 1.04 sheriffs to, to, to 1,000 residents. And so I think that's more than what we have as a city. So it seems like there would be so many more benefits without raising the taxes of the, of the residents and the property owners to dissolve. And, and even if you don't want to do that and you want to protect the city for whatever reason, I can't imagine, but for whatever reason you have, not considering dissolution as part of what you're doing here seems to be missing something that, that could really benefit us. And so that's all I have to say. Thank you. Um, yeah, but I guess my understanding with this committee is basically looking at the fire option. The council, I mean, at the last meeting, you know, a couple, there were some comments about disincorporation, and so that would be coming from the council if that's what they would like to do. And so, that, yeah, this, this committee is to look at the, the fire service option, but it has been mentioned, we've heard in the public before, about disincorporation as an option. I just Never wanted to the experience. Probably. I just wanted to go on the record. Yes, it does. It has to go through. Um, there are several stages. First, a petition has to be signed by a percentage of the population um, to disincorporate. And we're just talking vague here because this has nothing to do with. So, do we put this under my comments or something? But um, there has to be a vote of the that goes from the petition to then it has to be placed on the ballot, um, and then it has to be decided by the. 66 percent is a or something that, that is, yeah that they want to disincorporate at the same time um taxes are still being paid and any money that is being owed is um, compounding and taxes will be paid on that most often when it hasn't happened because it's such a cumbersome process there was one city in california that it did um, but any taxes that are owed at the time that this process begins follow the people that that started the process right. so, so there's no there's no tax savings from it there there most likely will be a special tax that has to be created in order to cover the costs that's that's part of the process because we're in california that delays the process because people have to vote on this special tax so they don't vote so you're in limbo for all that time our goal here um, partially is, again, we have to weigh the, the desires of the com community. Um, we believe that the community wants 60 open. Uh, this incorporation will not open 60, it will close it. And so that is, that is why we are going in this direction. But as for what we're doing here, we're, forming, we're, we're talking about forming a uh, fire department. The other part of, of possibly disincorporating um, won't open 60 for us, won't change that. And it won't save our money. Also, um, just and this, and this is general comments. Um, there's a little more to disincorporating than just say, oh, let's disincorporate and doing it. Um, as she described, as we vote with people and that whole arduous process. Um, if the city were to decide to disincorporate, that goes to LAFCO, and LAFCO actually makes the decision. After after the city has decided or petition, then they have to deal with it. Um, if we were to disincorporate and uh, be annexed by either Lake Elsinore or Menifee, uh, the debt that we owe, which I think is close to a million dollars in uh, benefits, retirement benefits, would have to be paid off. Um, there's there's a lot of negative things too about disincorporation. Um, we probably would lose our library. Um, the, the, there's a number of other things. I'm at almost now. I have to go back to my files to to look at the long discussions we had about disincorporating you know, when I first got on the council. But it's not just a an easy option. It has serious consequences and. In some cases, you may feel that it would benefit. Um, it would certainly benefit those who want to keep the BLM plan. I, I get that. Um, but the problem with that is that if we just incorporated that BLM land, it could be given to someone else, and that person could develop it, and we would have absolutely no control. If we have the BLM land, we could control what the development was. 
we could develop half instead of all. We could make sure there were parks, trails, whatever we wanted done with it. If somebody else does it, they could put in 20 unit apartment buildings or low cost housing, they could put in whatever they feel like doing if they get control of the BLM land. So there's positives and negatives to all the approaches and that's why it's so hard because we have to look at all of those and try to decide which <coughs> choice is the best one for everybody, for the majority of the people. So, enough said. Um, yeah. I just want to say I appreciate that you guys tried with the fire department, put all the effort in, and I, I understand. I mean, you don't want to just give up and just say, discorporate even though some of us are yelling it. I get that, so I appreciate your hard work, I really do. Um, I just had a couple questions. I, I haven't met Mr. Palmer yet. Uh, I just feel like the AMR thing, seeing if AMR would go to 16, didn't we already do that? Did Ariel do that? Did they already try to find out how much it was gonna be? It was gonna be ridiculous because it delays the response time to some city and it was gonna cost me too much to even put one there. I, mean, I just hate to see you do all the work that was already done. Right. Well, that's why I want. Aware. Okay. I'm aware of that, and I want to talk to them and find out and see if there's anything's changed. You know, if there's, if, if they would look at that as a true option for them. Yeah. And but, he has some ideas that might enhance their change in their decision. So it's worth a try. I, I told him, you know, everything that we went through, the conversations that we had, and how discouraged we were. And he came up with a couple of ideas that I thought, well, it's certainly worth a shot because that's my goal mm -hmm. is to get 60 to get the so. Yeah, definitely. Because we had that softball game the other day, and a girl got fell, hit her head at a golf field. And it took him 11 minutes driving time to get there, where 60 would be one minute. I timed it. It was like one minute driving behind a slow car. I'm like, oh, gosh. I know. That's, that's yeah. our ultimate No, I, I def definitely think something needs to be there. Um, just because oh, I still believe that LAFCO will open 60 up because that's not. LAFCO doesn't It's not LAFCO's choice. There, no, it would be the county's choice. The county's choice. LAFCO, LAFCO won't. I, I understand what, what you're saying, and I know that that's, that's been put out there a lot, but um, what happens is, is the county takes over and decides what happens with that station, mm -hmm. and the county isn't going to man a station that only feeds Canyon Lake when Canyon Lake is no longer paying for those services. Oh, they'll what open that station. This, well, then if you can get that in Rowdy, honey, I would love to see it because all we've ever heard, honestly, all he we've ever heard. He just can't guarantee it. Well, he can't guarantee it. He can't promise you. Um, Mm, there's been more than that, but if you can get somebody to promise me that 60 is open, then then, then I can get statistics as to why they even opened that station in the first place. No, I need I need in order to give up this idea, in order to do what you're asking us to do, mm -hmm. I will not do that to the remainder of those citizens. I will not do it on counties. Maybe we would, maybe we wouldn't. It would have to be guaranteed, yeah. and that's what we're fighting for. No, I'll, so. I'll look it up as to why they open up certain stations in certain areas and strategically put them in certain places for a reason, Here. and I'll, I'll get the statistics for it. Okay, statistics Here. are fine. I need in writing that they're going to do it, or we or we can't keep talking about the possibility yeah, that they won't. Back statistics aren't necessarily affected because things have changed, and as you know, five is going to be moving down right near Eastgate. Um, well, as I understand it, it's a deal. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. That will affect their not being interested in housing anybody at Station 60 because they're much closer. So, you know, statistics are one thing I've been working with and I found out doesn't make a whole lot of difference. It can affect it, but it certainly does increase the deciding factor today because exactly. today things so you get that guarantee of are different. So. Um, my other question is, um, if we, if you guys do go forward with a fire department, is there a company that's going to come in and put it together? Yeah. Well, I saw something in the minutes a while back. Um, but we haven't really decided yet whether we would hire a fire chief and have him do the consulting on, he would hire an engineer and a captain or 
whatever it is, and they would put the fire department together. We would have to look and see which would be the most cost-effective and fastest way to do it. So that hasn't been decided yet. Okay. Um, and my other one was my concern with Marietta. I just don't, again, want him to jump through the same hoops. I know Marietta is very costly. But I, I, I just was concerned about that as to why they would even consider Canyon Lake because we're such a, a small amount of money in their big hole of money. We have to try. Yeah. Well, the worst thing they can do is tell us no. Right. And uh, it's like Temecula. Um, two years ago, a year and a half ago, Temecula was in fine shape. They had money for their fire department, their police department. I spoke with their mayor about two weeks ago, and they have great concerns about the near future, and they are starting to look at options because they know that down the road, which is what we should have done a long time ago because we got up against the wall before we actually decided to, to do something about it. As you know, we were drawing money out of reserves to pay for our safety. Well, you can't keep doing that. You know, we're, we're way low on resources of what we should be. So, uh, and one of the things I liked about the consultants report was that if we created our own fire department, ultimately we would be able to save, uh, it was about 300,000, wasn't it? By the time we got three, four years into it, um, that we could put money back into reserves, all things being normal. So, uh, it's, uh, oh, I don't know where I was going with this. Well, my concern with that, though, too, is you can have one major hazmat and all your reserves are gone right there. Um, just because there are calls that we wouldn't be covered under if we didn't have a certain contract. Just, just throwing well, that out we there. Well, would not sign a contract that didn't protect the stores in each place is concerned. Well, the, looking through this fire study, it did say that hazmat wasn't included in this. Uh, that was my concern with that. Yeah. Well, okay. I, I'm, I, I'm not knowledgeable enough to respond to that, but, uh, but the few people that I've talked to that I have confidence in have made me feel that that would not be a huge concern for us. Mm -hmm. so we're not here to have so. I think that was all my questions. Okay. Thank you. Do you have anything to say? John Sites? And I speak. Oh, you can speak. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Sorry. So our next meeting will not be April 14th? Oh. Yeah. Okay, so our next meeting will not be April 14th. We'll just uh, take that off and then... Right, we'll do it but as we like do a plan yes. okay. as determine as needed. Perfect. So as things that comes up, then we'll notify you and we'll put together an agenda as things okay. materialize. Okay. Okay. Do they know the discussion?